DJ Koki is here at Crystal Theater. And uh, Sunday, uh, uh, what's your name? My name's Paula Rougeau. And yours? I'm Stephen Deroche. And yours? I'm Gerard Blakeney. And yours? Joe Sullivan. Now, what parts do you guys play? I have three parts. I'm George Washington, the Inspector George Washington, not the real one. I'm the ticket seller, and I sell tickets, and I'm the captain of an Italian ship. I'm Inspector Winston. I'm very forgetful. I'm also the captain of a German ship, and I'm a ticket seller and who sells tickets. I'm just Giuseppe. <laughs> I'm Sammy Tate, and I'm Daniel Murphy. But today I'm playing Sammy Tate, and he's a thief. He steals from bags. And he steals money from him, too. I steal yeah, from him. Yeah, catch him. Yeah, and then, they and then I, get my bun, I get my money back. Uh, do, I get do, you, do any of you have any solos? Uh, we have a uh, Russian solo. Yeah, we sing in the where background, all of us really are there, backgrounds, but. and we sing like this little Russian thingy. Yeah, and we do a little dance. Could so you do we, it? All right, okay. all right, all right. right. right one, two, three. One day to my village some horsemen came out riding. Back then I was only a child. The sun, it was gleaming. The sabers were gleaming. The screams in the air echoed wild. That's when I learned what it's like to be spurred for being the people that you are. Everybody! Every man, woman, child, all were utterly reviled, trampled under the boots of the Tsar. So don't speak to us at this side as some beautiful state. For to me it's a place that I always will hate. You should be happy to be where you are instead of under the boots of the Tsar. My name is Brendan O'Melia, I, and I'm here at Ben Franklin Theater interviewing DJ Copeland. DJ, what part do you have in the play? Well, today I'm playing um, Dr. Schmidt. He's an Ellis Island doctor who has two nurses, Nurse Martin and Nurse Jackson. And basically, the role he plays is he, che you know, he checks all the health of all the immigrants and tells them whether they're sick or not, and he sort of helps it along that way. Do you have any other parts? Yeah, last night I played a Russian Hebrew named Nikolai Goldovsky. Um, he's basically what you'd call a patriot. He's he's just desperate to to escape the czar, and at one point he actually kisses an an inspector at Ellis Island because he because he's so happy that he's finally gonna get in, and he actually get gets thrown in detention which is a place where everyone has to wait if, they're, if people think that they're not ready to get through yet. So basically, yeah, that's, that's it. Do you have any solos? Yeah, I have quite a few with him. Um, could you sing one of them for us, please? So this is it. This is it. The American dream. I've traveled halfway across the world. I've gone to extremes. This is it. Because I believed in a vision I had in my mind of a place that I heard of where life could be kind to a man with the will to succeed from the sweat of his brow. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you say, I do not remember it with so, quite so much affection. One day to my village, a horseman came on by, and heard that I was only a child. The sun it was beaming, the sables were gleaming, the screams in the That's when I learned what it's like to be spurred for being the people that you are. Every man, woman, child, all will utterly revile, trampled under the boot of the So don't 
Karaoke, Crystal Theater, and you are? Chloe Woodhouse. What part do you play, Chloe? I'm Brigitte Anderson. What does Brigitte Anderson do in the play Alice Island? Well, she's a reformer who is friends with Alice Roosevelt, and she is appointed by the president himself to come to Alice Island and give him a report on what is going on and what to do to fix it up a bit. So, Can you relate to your character at all? Yes, I am very much like her. Cheryl even said that it's like the perfect role for me. I'm just being myself on stage, so it's fun. That's great to hear. Do you have any solos? Yes, I do. It's called You Can't Change the World. May you please sing for part of it for us? We're all excited to hear. Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> fine. Okay. You can't change the world, they say, but I know it's not that way. If we did one good thing each day, we would change the world. That's all I'm singing. <laughs> Thanks, Chloe. That would help for free. Miss Anderson, I admire your skill, but you can't change the world. <coughs> Go home and don't be a foolish girl. But... <coughs> I'm Gerard Blakeney, and I'm interviewing the director of Ellis Island, Samantha Coolidge. And do you have to say anything to say about the play? Well, um, I think these kids did a really wonderful. <laughs> I think these kids did a really wonderful job. I mean, they're a cast of, you know, of of how many? Like you guys are like 50, I think. There's 50 kids, and. Um, I mean, they're, they're a great group, they're lively, as you can see, and um, they're great singers, great actors, great actresses, and uh, I think they pulled through, I really do, and I, I love doing this show with them. It was a lot of fun, and I hope they had a lot of fun. So, I, I, I have a very positive experience. Well, well.
Shapiro. And what part do you have in the play? Um, I play an American whose name is Mrs. MacArthur. Um, and can you relate to your part? Um, no, not really, because she's really snooty sometimes. And she doesn't like, um, like she's against like women like going out like, um, like, <laughs> I don't know. But Did yeah. you, do you like your part? Yeah, it's a lot of fun to be like snotty and everything, so. Um, how many plays have you done for Crystal Theater? Um, I, I don't know. I've been in it since I was in first grade, so. Okay, do you have any solos? Um, yeah, I sing A Woman's Place in the second act. Would you like to sing part of it for us? Sure. A woman's place is in the home. It's the core of her existence from when she should never roam. That glowing hearth is her domain. She can rule through the day, but at night the king will reign. Be charming and cheerful, a shining moral compass. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ellie Werner, and we're here at Crystal Theater, and I'm interviewing Allie Kuttner and Sally Chakwin. And what parts do you guys have in the play? I'm Mrs. Ellsworth. And I'm Mrs. Sutton and Nurse Jackson. And what does your part like do in the play? Well, uh, Cheryl made up this analogy that Mrs. Ellsworth, iron fist with lace glove, she really wants to be the head of the matrons, but Mrs. MacArthur takes over because she's old and she's the boss. She tries to help everyone. And, well, Miss Sutton is just like the ditzy southern girl who's like, ah, everyone like me. And she, like, er all the guys are supposed to like her. And, um, and Nurse Jackson is just the old nurse who wants Dr. Schmidt to like her, but sh she's like old and crabby. And then um, Nurse Martin always gets him and she's just like, do your characters relate to you guys at all? Oh yeah, trying to help people. I strive for that all the time. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Sometimes a little, I'm a little ditzy, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> and do you guys have any solos in the play? Uh, we have this song called A Woman's Place. Do you want to do the end? Can you guys sing it for us? I'll sing my part. Can you sing my part? Oh, you guys, Liz, come here. Yeah. Oh. And, okay, and who are these two? She's with Ellsworth. She's with Ellsworth, too, and this is Anderson. Yeah. We need MacArthur. Wait, and can okay. you sing Miss MacArthur's part? I know it. Yeah, sort of. Okay. You're first. I don't really know this part very well. I can, well, whatever. A woman's place is in the home. It's the core of her existence from which she should never roam. That glowing hearth is her domain. She can rule through the day, but at night the king will reign. Be charming and cheerful, a shining moral compass. Until hope is that and evil and the king decides to dump us. Can't you see today's a new society with ever-changing rules about propriety? A woman today can better people's lives. We can play other roles and simply mothers and wives. A woman's place, it's by her husband's side A lovely decoration, you remain as blush and bright If you defer to your mate, he will never chide Stay sweet and unassuming, it's a method true and tried Always demure, always refined Till the king abdicates, when your face becomes blind Ladies, it seems, we have quite the dilemma Still I'd hate to see it come to us or them uh, Don't you think it's time we went and called the truce Said male and female free to find their own best use. Let's put aside all posturing, admit it's a ruse. Then we can live the way we like and make no excuse. A woman's place. A woman's place is anywhere she wants to be. That glowing heart. She'll make her mother. She can rule through the day. She'll rule the day. Be charming and cheerful. Shine a moral compass. Until hope is that and earful and the king decides to dump us. So if you find you're missing that extra chromosome, remember that your place is in the home. Don't be old fashioned. Whether blessing or worse, for better or for worse, <laughs> this is a fact we have to face. Oh, a woman's place. Stay at home where you belong. A woman's place. By her husband being strong. A woman's place. Get out and make a difference. A woman's place. With that further reference, I think we can agree. A woman's place is anywhere she wants to be. Oh, 
I'm a president. Well, yeah, um, tonight I play the Russian general, but on sat next Saturday I am the prophetess of doom. Yeah, and who exactly is the prophetess of doom? She's a crazy person who is predicting the end, of the end of the world, and she's hoping that the aliens are going to come over and take over, and yeah. Yeah. Do you, what kind of, how does your character interact with the other characters? Well, she's basically kind of, um, shakes over, and she not, she's not really um, that friendly, and she's trying to scare people a lot. Yeah. So what's your favorite scene in the play? Um, probably the scene where I do my song. What is in that scene? Um, well, first, I walk over to Jen Parks and her friends, and then um, I talk to her. <laughs> I talk to them and I scare them, and then um, I start singing the song, and then the policeman comes and takes me away. Yeah, and which is your least favorite scene in the play? Scene? Um, I don't know. A scene where I, just, uh, where I have to go outside and walk around and then yell, "The end is near." Okay, and do you have to play? Yes, but I'm not really in the mood to sing it right now. Too bad. Let's hear you sing it. Repent, sinner. Get down on your knees. Get down on your knees. Repent, sinner. Stop doing just what you please. Come to you. I'm to back to those little green men. I'm going to get to repent, sinner. Get down on your knees.
Ron. Catherine Kiyoki. Robinson. Danielle Stroyley. And who are you going to show? The dance dancers. Well, can, or can you show? Can you show us your tap dance? And what part do you have in Cosmic Nightingale? I'm Jane Castleman. Do, how does your like your part fit in with the play? Well, Jane Castleman's a TV news reporter, and she keeps everyone up to date about what's happening with the whole story and the aliens. Are you relate to your character in any way? Well, sort of, because I'm really serious, like Jane Castleman is in some parts, and other times I'm really crazy, like she is. Have you seen this before? Yes, I have. I was the Italian Prime Minister and an African person. Do you, do you like this show? Like, is it fun doing it twice? Yeah, it's fun because it's like you already know what happens and it's like really cool. Are there any solos in the show? Yes, I do. Do you want to sing it for us? Okay. A tour of the galaxy with spacemen from the stars. What a place that would be to go singing on Jupiter. And Mars will not exactly there. We interrupt your regular programming to bring you this special news report. Our unearthly visitors claim they want a singer. Yes, you heard me correctly, a singer, to take it back with them and represent us, the Earth, in their galactic confederation. <coughs> the various nations of the world who wish to participate will present a singer of their choosing at a gala event to be held, to be held in the near future of the U.S. Village. The lucky winner will get a grand tour of the galaxy, and his or her country will receive scientific knowledge in return. Talk about weird folks. Talk about bizarre. But what else could you expect from the spaceman from the stars? A tour of the
Um, and I'm here with? Ali Shapiro. And what part do you have in the play? Um, I'm Jane Kassman, the news reporter. Um, do you like your part? And Yes, I do. Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. It's kind of wild and crazy during the song. So, Can you relate to the part that you have? Um, yeah, because I'm kind of a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> Just a little. Yeah. Um, how does your character like fit in with the story? Um, well, she kind of like tells the audience what's happening after the, yeah, kind of like a narrator. And so. Um, do you have any solos in the show? Yeah, I have one solo. Do you like it? Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. Do you want to sing it for us? Sure. Okay. A tour of the galaxy with spacemen from the stars. What a privilege that would be to go singing on Jupiter or Mars. Well, not exactly there. Thank you, Allie. from the play Cosmic Nightingale at the new Ben Franklin Theater. And I'm here with... Paulo Ruggio. And what part do you have in Cosmic Nightingale? I have Johnny Johnson, who is a radio announcer, and then Johnny Dollar, who's like this sleazy um, music promoter. Um, can you relate to your character in any way? Not really. Uh, it was fun playing him because I wasn't playing a person. I, w I was acting like uh, normally like I wouldn't, so it was real fun because that, that's not how I really act. Um, can, do do you work well with like Jess and like and like all the Cosby Nightingales? Yeah, yeah, it was fun because I got to we got to um, interact with each other the whole play, and I think we had really good chemistry. Um, do you have any solos in the play? I have a duet with Jen Parks. Um, would you? Can you tell us about your character and how it fits in with the story? Well, Johnny Dollar is trying to make Jen Parks famous, but. He's doing it in a way that Jen Parks doesn't want it, so they're, so they're like um, yelling. Well, they don't agree on anything. And, and he's like, do this way, but she wants to do it another way. Um, do you have any solos in the show? 
Yeah, I have a duet with uh, Jen Parks. Would you like to sing part of it for us? Okay. Okay. Honey, baby, sweetie, come on, listen to me. I'm the only one who can take you to the top. Now don't you see, without me or nothing, you don't stand a chance. Girl, this is a business, not some fairy tale romance. It's all about moves. It's all about moves. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. I'll wait, wait a minute. And what part do you have? Jen Parks. Do you like your part? Yes. How does your part fit in with the story? Well, um, the, well basically, um, the aliens are coming to um, Earth to find a singer, and um, Jen Parks really wants to be um, picked to go back to space with them. And uh, um, uh, they go to UN auditions, and it doesn't work out. And Jen Parks is just singing in the park, and they hear her. And they pick her, so. Um, so, can you relate to your part anyway? Um, yeah, because uh, basically her dream is um, wanting to be a singer, and that's what I want to be when I grow up. So. Okay. So, do uh, you have any solos in the show? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to sing one of them for us? Okay. Take me to the Yeah. Take me to the stars. No, no, no. I'm just gonna sing. If wishes were so, I know where I'd go. I'd find me a place in a distant galaxy. There I would touch them with my voice, make them cry and then rejoice. There I would be just the music and me. 
living a fairy tale, a cosmic nightingale. Thank you, Jess. Hi. Okay.
backstage at Crystal Theater and escaped to, to the North Pole and I'm with Michelle Mayer and what part do you play Michelle? Um, I play the Ice Queen and this is my senior show. Alright, now because you're the star, can you tell us a little bit about the show? Um, it's about a power mad Ice Queen who really doesn't know what to do with her life because she loves her daughter but she needs to be strong because she doesn't think the kingdom will listen to a woman unless she's mean and evil and her daughter get runs away after she finds out her mom is actually evil and she runs away so I go rescue her well try to rescue her but she rescues me from my evil ways and we become a happy family again Oh, I see and so how long have you been with Crystal Theatre Michelle? since fourth grade. Oh, and that's a long time. Um, <laughs> so, do you have any solos in the show? Yes, I have a few. Would you like to sing one of them for you? No, not really. <laughs> I want to save my voice. Okay, Michelle. Crystal Theatre, Michelle? Um, I'm, a, I'm a student teacher and I work with Cheryl and Mr. and Mrs. Lombardo um, three days a week and um, basically I move set and I help teach the kids. Okay Michelle, thank you. You're going to be graduating from high school this year? Yes I am. What are your plans after this? Um, I plan to go to college to teach history and Spanish to high school students. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to go yet, but I should know in a few weeks when I get my acceptance, le acceptance letters back, that's if they accept me. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, Michelle. Um, so, what about the senior project? Um, the senior project is basically like when you've been with Crystal for a few years. Well, I've been it for eight years, but... Like when you've been with Crystal for a long time, Cheryl will give you a show or she'll write you a show or you'll do a cabaret to kick off your last year in Crystal Theater and go out with a bang, I guess. And this is my senior project. I'm actually very glad she chose the show because I love the role. It's fun to play and everyone in the cast has just been brilliant and it's been a great experience. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. You're welcome.
stage at Crystal Theater in Nora, Connecticut, and I'm here with Samantha Lomkoff. And what part do you play in the show? Princess Crystal. Um, do you relate to your character in any way? Um, I think I do because um, there are times when I feel mad at my mom and like I just want to get away from her, but then I feel like um, innocent and then I forgive her a lot, so I think I do relate to her a lot. So tell us the background of Princess Crystal. Like, how does she fit into the show? Well, her mother is planning to kill Silver Star, so she runs away and she goes to the North Pole and she meets Santa Claus and all the elves and um, she befriends Santa and Garth, who is one of the elves, and then um, at the end she kind of tells her mother that she doesn't love her anymore and um, her mother realizes that she has to be kinder and can't be in control all the time. So you mentioned someone playing Santa, you said Santa Claus. Now, are you related to this person by any chance? You... Yes, he's my brother. Okay, um, very cool. So how long have you been doing Crystal Theater for? I've been doing it since second grade. Very cool. So um, do you enjoy doing this part? Is it something new that you've done? Is it like have you played other parts like this before? Um, I, this is my biggest role I've ever had in Crystal Theater and it's really fun to play. So you have a few solos, I'm sure. Um, would you like to sing some for us? Sure. With my own eyes, I saw her face. What a horrible surprise. What a terrible disgrace. How can I look the other way and pretend I didn't hear her say the words I know I heard her say with my own ears? I heard her voice, and in spite of all my fears, there is no other choice. I have to run. Thank you. siblings. Okay, um, this is Chris and Sam, yeah, okay. So, is this the first show you guys have done together, brother and, like, the state together? Um, I think this is second? the second? Yeah, the second. What's the other show you guys did together? A Spinning Tail. Do you guys enjoy being together in a show? Yeah, it's yeah, really fun. Yeah, it's really fun because then we get to see each other. <laughs> Aw, how cute. Are you guys on the same night? Yes. yes. Yo, this afternoon you're together? Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have a lot of scenes together in the show? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have any solos together? Uh, uh, we sing all for one and one for all, but it's kind of all the elves. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's okay. It's so it's like a group thing. Yeah. What else do you want? Um, would you like to sing? Um, it. So, yeah, all the elves can come sing. Yeah. Okay. Ready. Where should we sing? Where should we start? You should. You should start. Okay. Now don't go in the land of the midnight sun, there is a code that we elves live by. All for one and one for all. It's the definitive tie that binds us all together in eternal brotherhood. So if you are to join us, 
Let's make sure it's understood. It's all for one and one for all. One for all. If your back's against the wall, just call whenever trouble may befall. It's all for one and one for all. There's more to this than meets the eye. For now, it's up to you to learn the names of every single member of our crew. Eagle, Aver, Axel, are to mention but a few. And Brother God will help you out and show you what to do. Now come with me and let's begin your elven education. Then all of us will help you learn your chosen new vocation. They're dancing bears and dancing dolls of every variation. They're fluffy cats and singing birds of every known mutation. But let us first explain to you the reason for our attention. For there remains one salient point that they forgot to mention. Good great. Megan Kellogg, Kim Fushi. And what part do you guys play? Oma, Oma Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> okay. And what what is Oma Lucy's character like? She's the grandmother of the show. Um, we're Princess Crystal's grandmother. We're kind of like we're the, the, wise the old yeah wise yeah. old woman. We, we 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 can like tell the future by like the stars and stuff. And <laughs> yeah, we're like the whole like core of the show. You know? <laughs> cool. So um um. How long, like, wait, hold on, what? How can you be doing the three shows? Okay. How can you be doing the three shows? Um, well, wow. there's, how, well, we can play the three parts because there's three shows, um, two were yesterday and we're in intermission right now during the third one. So she's playing it today. I've, I played it last night. And I played it yesterday afternoon. Cool. And what's your song like, Find the Light Within? What's that like? Um, <laughs> okay, um, Find the Light Within, it's kind of like the moral, I guess you could say, of the show, because it's like telling you, it's like sh telling you like how to feel confident about yourself and everything, and it's like, you don't have to worry about anything, you just have to find that light in. Within. When things Hard. seem a darkest. Yeah, when yeah, things darkest. You find the light within, quote from the show. <laughs> um, how long have you guys been with Crystal Theater? Two years now. Two years. Um, since I was seven, so that's like six. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Did you want to? Oh. 
Okay. Do you guys want to sing part of the song? Sure. Okay. Though the world may crumble all around and our faith may start to dim, there's an ancient secret I have found to help when things look grim. In your heart you'll feel a spark that's where you'll begin when your world is getting cold and dark. Find the light within. Thank you guys, that was awesome.
backstage here at Crystal Theater for the closing show of A Spinning Tale. And I'm here with the cast, and uh, this is... Ben Simpson. And what role do you play in A Spinning Tale, Ben Simpson? I play Sidney Molnar, the Royal Miller. Now, can you describe Sidney for us, like what's his personality? Sydney's boastful, he's a liar, basically a slob. <laughs> he hangs out with his cronies and yeah, until and then he kind of advances towards the end of the show and becomes this royal miller. Oh. Well, can you relate to Sydney in real life? Like are you a slob in real life? Or are you boastful? I hope not. I don't think I have too big of a head. Maybe I do. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Next question. Okay, um yes, um how do you think the show went last night? Last night was amazing. Everyone was just like on. Like first weekend we were kind of getting into it and it was really good last weekend. But last night it was like special. Like everyone was on with their characters. Now do you have any solos in the show? Yeah, I have a few. I have What's in a Name, Strong to Gold, Majesty Miller, um, Dumb Di um, Dumb Diddy Di no, Ta The Tango, Dumb Dee Dee Die, yeah. D -D -D. <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what, what do you think your favorite one would be? Like, you have a lot, so... Um. I love doing the tango with my two girls, Laura oh. and Brittany. They're amazing. Oh, would you like to do uh, an example from the tango? No. <laughs> really? Are you sure? Well, Laura. Laura, Laura. No, we're we're going to the tango. tango. No, wait. Um, Go ahead. How about... <laughs> <laughs> what's the last line oh, before oh, I trust oh, you? Yeah, do you want to just take it from trust me? Ugh. Oh, wait, wait, okay, are we gonna dance and sing? Oh, shit. Okay. Trust me. Trust you. Why won't you trust me? How could I trust you? How can you believe that I would deceive you, my love? Keep your hands to yourself. Heave it, please trust me. How can I trust you? Believe that I love you. And somebody else. With someone else I'd never bother because I'd rather be with you. Thank you. Very good. Very, very good. All right. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Samantha. Oh, you're welcome. Now I'm here with Emily. Thank you. 
Emily Katz, and Samantha Homkoff. And who do you guys play in the show? We play Rumpelstiltskin. Um, now, who is Rumpelstiltskin? What does he do in the show? Rumpelstiltskin is a little elf who is very lonely and doesn't have anybody to play with, and not a son or anything. Uh, so, um, Melinda, her, Melinda's father, um, lies to the king and tells that his daughter could spin straw into gold. And I come, and I spin the straw into gold, and then I say, well, wh where's my reward? And I take our firstborn child, and at the end, she names her child Rumpelstiltskin, and I end up not taking the child after all. Very cool. So do you guys like the, like the story? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's kind of fun to do. Every time, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> when I was little, I used to read the story over and over again with my mom in bed, so I really like the story. Now, what does Rumpelstiltskin do without the whole show? Does she, like he watches? He's like kind of like a spy throughout the whole show, and then at the end, um, when he meets everyone, they don't know he's an elf, and when he he then he reveals he's an elf, and everyone is like shocked that he's an elf, and then they realize that he. Um, Melinda never spun the straw into gold and stuff like that. Oh, um, so do you guys have any solos in the show? Yes, we have. I have actually a bunch, but um, one of the song songs that we like is "Dum Dee Dee Die." Oh, would you guys mind singing a little bit of it for us, please? Sure. 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 One, two. Okay. Let's do one, three, three. One, two, three. Dum Dee Dee Die. Dum Dee Dee Dee. Living in the woods is a life that's free. But oh, how happy I would be if I had someone to play with me. Very good. Good luck today, guys.
Sanchanella. Melissa Labadia. And who do you guys play in Spinning Tail? I'm the king. I'm the queen. Um, can you explain a little bit about who the king is, like what he does in the show? Sure. Okay, well, the king is an older character. He's decrepit and um, he's hard of hearing and he's a wild, <laughs> he's a wild kind of character. Um, all over the place, you know, bigger than life character, and it was really fun. It's definitely my favorite character so far that I've played here at Crystal Theater. Now, can you tell me a little bit about the queen? Um, the queen, like, always usually gets what she wants, and she likes a lot of men, a lot, a lot of men. And, um, yeah, she just pretty much, like, goes behind her husband's back with all these men, and, you know, she's fun, really fun. Um, can you re can you relate to the king at all? Are you like anything like him in real life? Well, um, yes, you are, Diva. <laughs> <laughs> well, the king is very um, bigger than life, and I think that I'm a bigger than life person. I have a lot of energy, and <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's a funny part, and um, yeah, greedy. I'm not greedy though, but uh, you know, it, I think that. It came out well. Everything, everything worked, and I was able to, you know. Um, now, can you relate to the queen at all? Um, a little bit, except I don't like a ton of men. But you know, <laughs> um, yeah, I really turn like I really like doing the queen all four nights of the show. Cause then I didn't have a double cast. That was fun, and I worked really well with Joe. So that was, it was good. It was nice. <laughs> so you like doing it all the time rather than having an off night? Um, yeah, it's That's fun the best. because like, That's the best. you know, <laughs> on Broadway, like you always do it pretty much unless you get sick. So, right, you know, yeah. it's nice. Um, do you guys have any solos in the show? Uh, yeah, I have um, my aria, which is Ah Sweet Youth, and I have um, Strong to Gold and um, the quartet, which we're both in. Um, and what about you? I have, I never met a man I didn't like, and then I'm in Strong to Gold, and we have a little secret, the quartet. Can you, die, can you guys, um, say whatever one you want that you sing together? The secret, right. secret one. Um, right. yeah, all right. Gold, 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 what a miracle to behold. The joy it imparts brings a thrill to my heart. It brings comfort and security, a life of utmost certainty, a peace and total surety. What, what a wonderful thing is gold. Thank you. Good luck today.
Thomas, Kate, and um, what role do you guys play in Spinning Tail? I'm Gwendolyn. I'm Beatrice. Cecilia. We're <laughs> the snobs. Now, who are the snobs? They're like the rich people that are there, and they're really mean to like everyone, and they don't get into anything. Oh. Um, oh, and who are you? Lena. Okay. And do you guys enjoy playing the snobs, like being all, oh, darling, and la la? Um, well, yeah, but it's kind of hard because you have to like make it like really snobby and it's really hard because I'm really nice and I don't like it. <laughs> so, so, you, okay. <laughs> so you guys can't relate to your characters at all? <laughs> um, I guess not, I don't know. <laughs> well, we all have those moments when we're a little bit snobby. So, um, so can you tell us a little bit of the story for, for me, please? Um, well, she likes to say something about it. <laughs> Um, well, they don't really like anyone. They think that whenever somebody's happy, they're like, they're like looking at them like they're weird. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys have any solos in the show? No, but we kind of well, like all we of us sing. A bright lights, in Bright Lights Big City, we have one thing. Would you like to sing it for us, please? You don't have to if you. Sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> If you think we're in control. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If you think you're in control, it'll cut you right down to size. Vanity will take its toll. Better open up your eyes. Shop around. You're sure to find something. Hear that sound. It's your heart thumping. Feel the excitement boiling up through your brain. And it's all because of Brian Light. <laughs> okay, you guys did really well. Thank you. No, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>